I'm sorry, this video might be a little bit chaotic because my puppy is awake and being horrible. Keely, come here. Oh, okay. Hey there, it's Bree, and this is your guide to Brittany C. Cherry. This video was a request by one of my subscribers and it was a great video request because I love doing videos like these on authors that I absolutely love. I have one on Mariana Zapata and one for Lauren Rowe. Both of those are a little bit older so their newer books may not be on those videos. But this recommendation was a great reminder that I needed to do a video on Brittany C. Cherry because I've read most of Brittany C. Cherry's books and I love her books. Also, I'm probably going to call her Brittany C. Cherry forever because when I first started reading her books, that was the name that she went by on her books. Now I think she just has it as Brittany cherry. Anyway, so I thought I would kind of break this video up into sections. First of all, I thought one of the best ways to introduce you to Brittany C. Cherry if you haven't read her books before and if you're trying to figure out where to start or if you're trying to figure out whether you should read her or not or where to go next in her books, I thought it would be great to break this up into sections and first start with authors that I feel like are similar to Brittany C. Cherry. So if you are a big fan of her books, then I have some authors for you that you can kind of check out if you haven't already. If you've never read her books before and you're wondering what they are about and if you would like them, first of all, if you're a subscriber and you know my taste in books and you like my taste in books, you're gonna love Brittany C. Cherry because I love Brittany C. Cherry. She's one of my all-time favorite authors. A few authors that I find her books are similar to are Emma Scott, Nia Sheridan, and Kennedy Ryan. So I feel like by giving you those three authors, you should kind of get a gist of the type of books that she writes because she tends to write pretty emotional books. I actually got the opportunity to interview Brittany C. Cherry on Jess's channel, which was awesome, Jess from Peace Love Books. I will link it down below. It was such a great experience getting to know her and pick her brain a little bit. For someone who writes super emotional books, she is one of the most sunshine people I've ever met. Very optimistic and bright and sunny and the type of person that you just want in your life and want to be friends with her because she is just such a happy person and I almost wonder if the reason why she can maintain that happiness is because she puts all of her sad emotions into her books because her books can definitely pull at the heartstrings. And that's partially why I love them. She also writes epic romances. She tends to write a lot of grumpy heroes. There's a lot of grumpy sunshine. There is a lot of small town romances. She also, in quite a few of her books, tends to start out with her characters fairly young and then they get older, they gradually get older. So it's interesting being able to see like the entire lifetime of them and seeing the growth of their relationship and the growth of their characters. And it just feels real. Brittany C. Cherry tends to have more of a slow burn element in her books, or at least it takes, you see like this lifetime of a relationship evolve. Even if they, in, at the beginning, already had an attraction or relationship, you get to see it grow and evolve throughout the years, which I really, really like. One thing that I didn't mention is she also has very subtle humor in her books. It's not like laugh out loud, rolling on the floor laughing type of books, but there's a subtle humor in it. And I always appreciate that. I think that's kind of important, especially when you have really emotional books that you have some sort of element in it that maybe lightens things up a little bit so it's not heavy the entire way through. One thing that Brittany has a lot of are standalone series, which can be kind of confusing. First of all, the name seems contradictory. I'm also like, okay, is it a standalone or is it a series? It's both. So her books can be read. These books that are in these series that are standalone series can be read individually without having read the other books. They also can be read in any order but they do all kind of go together. The thing that's interesting about her books is one of her series, the Elements series in particular, is a standalone series, and there's not really anything tying them together, not really a location or characters or anything. The only thing that's tying them together are the titles because they're elements. So in the Element series, it's the air he breathes, so air is one of the elements. That's a grumpy hero, it's romantic suspense, has a widow heroine, the hero's also a dog owner, the dog plays a significant part in it, obviously it's a tearjerker and then you have the fire between high and low that one is childhood friends to lovers then you have the silent waters that one is brother's best friend if i remember correctly very emotional you have a heroine who's dealing with a lot of trauma and ptsd and then you have the gravity of us which is enemies to lovers kind of a forbidden romance type thing has a great meet cute as well the hero is an author it's very much opposites attract so that series can be completely
completely read as standalones because there's not really anything connecting them together except for the titles of the books. All right, and then you have the Compass series. This is another standalone series. However, in this one, there is a very slight connection between these. It's characters that are maybe mentioned in the very background, so you can read them out of order. It's not going to throw you off, but you can read them in order too. Southern Storms is the first book in the Compass series. This one is a small town romance. It's childhood friends to lovers. It's a second chance romance, and you have a loner hero in that one. Book number two in the Compass series is Eastern Lights. This one, the hero and heroine have a great meet cute. They meet on Halloween, and it's one of those things where they kind of meet, they have this amazing night together, and then they don't see each other for a while and then they reunite again. So I don't know if you'd necessarily call that second chance romance. It's second chance romance-ish. And then Western Waves is Compass number three. This book is an opposites attract situation. The heroine, she very much is like um, a romantic and the hero is the opposite. You definitely have a grumpy hero in this one. And then her latest release is Northern Stars and that's Compass book four. This is the one that I have not read yet. This one has the fame trope in it, which isn't my favorite, but I feel like if anyone can do it, it's Brittany C. Cherry. And this isn't the only book that has the fame trope in it. It's a new adult second chance romance and it's like high school sweethearts second chance romance. Brittany also has a duet. It's Landon and Shay. This you absolutely do need to read in order. This one was really good. This is definitely one of those books that kind of takes you on a journey with these characters. This is a little bit enemies to lovers and the first book is new adult and then that by the second book, because you're following the progression, they have they are into adulthood by that time. But in the first book, they're in high school. Their opposites attract, not necessarily enemies to lovers, they just kind of are in two totally different social circles. But then they end up entering into like this bet. It's one of those situations where they end up together because of a bet. And then of course, Brittany has a bunch of standalones. So you have Loving Mr. Daniels, which I think was her first book, if I remember correctly. This one is an age gap teacher student romance forbidden romance but I'm telling you if you this is the teacher student age gap romance for people who hate those things because the hero and heroine meet and they don't know that he is her teacher and she also is older because due to an illness she missed a year or two of school so she's actually like 18 or 19 and he's fairly young for a teacher so it's more like the forbidden aspect is more because he's her teacher but it's not necessarily because of a really big age difference like the, there is an age gap but it's not huge it's high school teacher which normally i absolutely hate but in this case it ended up working out really well so i definitely would recommend this to people who don't like teacher student romances and then you have Eleanor and Grey, which is another super emotional book. The hero and heroine know each other when they're children. The heroine goes through some traumatic things. They end up, she ends up moving away. They spend a lot of time apart. He ends up getting married to someone else, but then he loses his wife in an accident that one of his kids was injured in as well, and it just completely hardens him. And unbeknownst to her, she ends up getting hired by him to be his nanny. So it's a very interesting situation, and he's definitely a completely changed person by the time she meets him again, but that spark is still there. And that one, especially, like with the kids and everything. I don't tend to like children in romance novels, but I, I liked the children in this one and the relationship she ends up developing with them. And then there is Disgrace. This is a small town romance. This one's another grumpy hero. You have a divorced heroine whose husband left her after 15 years together. This is one of those situations where it's like a summer fling to something more. Another standalone is The Mixtape. I absolutely love this one. This one, the hero is famous. This has the fame trope in it. And the heroine, I think, does she own the bar or she works at a bar? I think she works at the bar and she wants to be a chef and something happens she ends up like helping him with something and he ends up offering her a job to be his personal chef so there's like forced togetherness it's really good he's also a bit grumpy because he's dealing with trauma of losing his brother and then you have behind the bars which is when oh my god i just realized i have all of these books sitting here and i have not held them up then you have behind the bars this is my favorite Brittany c cherry book i love this book so freaking much this one is another situation where the hero and heroine meet when they're in high school and then you kind of see the relationship grow and change as they get older and you see him go through something super traumatic and he ends up hardening toward the end, turns into a grumpy hero. Super emotional, really, really good. Then you have The Wreckage of Us. This one is a rock star romance. It's also a small town. The heroine's like a goth girl and I hate everyone but you hero. Next is Art and Soul. This one is new adult. Art and music plays a big part in this book. This one has a cinnamon roll hero. It has a really great meet cute. It deals with teenage pregnancy. The heroine is actually pregnant when she meets the hero. The next one is The Space in Between. Oh, you know what? I think the space in between is actually 
Britney's debut novel. I don't think it was actually Loving Mr. Daniels. I'm not really sure. So the heroine is dealing with the death of her fiance. The hero is a famous photographer and a reality TV show star. He's also dealing with a wife who is cheating and pregnant. It ends up being a situation where they go into this situation, this relationship, without the intention of having like emotions involved. But of course, we know how that happens. Another book that I saw that I have not read on her list of books is Our Totally Ridiculous Made Up Christmas Relationship, which if I can find this book, then I absolutely will be reading it this holiday season because I actually didn't even know it existed until I was like looking up all her books for this video. Sounds like the heroine has a family with a bunch of secrets. And I guess it sounds like her family, like uh, people in her family are famous. She ends up getting dumped right before Christmas. She's trying to avoid her judgmental family because she's been dumped. And then the hero in this is the black sheep of his family. And he, I guess, is an actor, but he comes from a family of lawyers. So it sounds like opposites attract. And I guess he ends up, because she's working at a talent agency, and I guess he comes in and maybe is going to try to work with the talent agency. That sounds cute. Okay, so as far as where to start with Britney C. Cherry, so I'm gonna talk about my favorites and where I think you should start based on the type of books that you like. If you love grumpy sunshine, like super, super grumpy sunshine, then I would say you will want to start with The Gravity of Us. This one is a fan favorite. I know a lot of people, for a lot of people, this is their favorite book. This is how they're introduced to Brittany Sage Harry. I totally understand. I love this book as well. This is one of my all-time favorites. It's probably my second favorite book of hers. So I highly recommend this one if you want a really great, really grumpy hero, but it's also super emotional and he does a complete 180, especially if you like when you start to see the cracks in the hero's like facade of being like this this angry, unemotional hero and you start to see the cracks in it. It happens really subtly in this one and it's so, so satisfying. If you're interested in what I was saying about Britney C. Cherry showing a relationship from like start to finish, like seeing the long game of a relationship and you also like this whole kind of bet relationship, like where they get started because they're betting each other, like who's gonna fall in love first. If you like new adult, I would say you would want to start with the Landon and Shay duet. It ends up being a bet, opposites attract, and obviously very, very emotional. If you like age gap, forbidden romances, teacher student, or if you're intrigued by the fact that I don't like those things, but I liked this book, I would say start with Loving Mr. Daniels. This one's really, really good for that. If you want to read a book simply because it's my favorite one by Brittany C. Cherry, I would start with Behind the Bars. This one's my all-time favorite. If you love and appreciate music, you'll love and appreciate this book. Also, if you like, especially at the beginning, the hero is like super, super cinnamon roll, very, very sweet. He does go through a transformation, but in the beginning, he is so freaking sweet and adorable, and I love him. 